Australian Peter Thompson drives off on the Royal Birkdale Championship course, where this year's Open Tournament is held. Follows Peter Thompson's fortunes as he makes for the 18th. It's a vital moment for the 24-year-old Aussie. Thompson tries again. And Thompson has done it, beating by only one stroke, Di Reese, Bobby Locke and Sid Scott, who tie for second place. A great ovation greets the new champion as in front of the pavilion he's presented with a trophy. Peter Thompson, who was runner-up for the last two years, is a worthy and modest champion. His rivals add to the applause as Thompson poses with his wife. Australia captures a coveted golfing trophy. What is up, Team MSC? It is open week. So I want to do a little video about my favorite open championship winner. There's a, a number of great open championship winners. Harry Varden won six times. That puts him at number one on the open championship list. But, you know, Tom Watson and Peter Thompson won five British Opens, as we say over here. So that is absolutely amazing. You know, a lot of people don't realize Jack Nicklaus was runner-up in seven British Opens, and he won three twice at St. Andrews. Very, very cool, right? So at any rate, I'm going to take some time now to break down Mr. Peter Thompson's amazing classic golf swing. Okay, guys, let's take a look at Peter Thompson's awesome classic golf swing. We see the wide stance. We're going to see a swing that looks very similar to Mr. Hogan. So we'll watch it through a few times, and then I'm going to break it down. Wow, so a lot of these fundamentals, uh, I believe, have been neglected and over time perhaps even lost. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is Peter Thompson's grip. Now, his left-hand grip, and I've made videos about this before, he really has the grip running up through his palm, which is uh, of his left hand, which is what I call the super lock. That allows the right the left forearm and the club shaft to work as more of one unit but you'll notice he has a very strong right hand grip and because of the way Mr. Thompson keeps his head behind the ball and allows his legs to work out from underneath him he hits kind of a underhand shot and and it's like he's throwing the ball even more underhand than even Mike Austin or Ben Hogan uh, but that right hand, that very strong right hand, you can see how he just, uh, you know, is prepared to throw this club and he has to basically keep the club face open and he's probably feeling the club face in line with the palm of his right hand. So he's got a very wide stance. Let's watch this takeaway here. He definitely moves into his right side. And right here, we'll start to see the left heel rise up. Actually, right there, it looks like he's probably trying to hit this ball pretty straight. It does not come up as much as he does on some other swings. But you'll see he adjusts his foot. And as he makes his weight transfer to his left side, the most important thing to notice is how he keeps his head behind the ball. What an amazing, uh, it, it's, it's just beautiful. I've said it before. I say the number one golf tip is not keep your head down. It's keep your head behind the ball. So we'll see where his head is in relation to the ball. Now the, the camera's a little bit behind him, but watch his head stay right where it is. And he just rotates and lets his body work out from underneath him. And notice his right foot is still planted. This is absolutely key in my opinion 
this is one of the things that Mr. Hogan uh, running at the ball. I find that Peter Thompson's lower body works in a fashion that is very, very similar to Mr. Hogan himself. And uh, Peter Thompson actually came in second place behind Ben Hogan in the 1953 Open at Carnoustie. So let's watch this one more time. Very smooth, very accurate. Now, this is a beautiful swing. It's the rear view. Uh, I get the opinion that he's, I'm of the opinion that he's probably going to try and hit this ball a little bit farther. But let's watch his wind up here. So his left heel comes off the ground a little bit more. This allows him to really get his weight deep into his right side. Now this is so crucial. I really believe that this right hip, this right glute, you should feel some tension up there if you've got your right hip deep enough. That's the biggest problem of my swing evolution was I would not let my right hip get deep enough. The more work that I do, I made a, a video earlier at Riviera where I'm showing Jason Day and Justin Rose sitting with their hips very, very deep. That's one thing I've noticed about the modern swing. If you're gonna do it properly, you better set those hips very, very deep if you're not gonna really be opening them up very much. But when you do the classic swing and you let your weight shift completely into your right heel, that allows you to get deep enough. In fact, you have to get deep in order to maintain your balance. And that's why some people have this just natural ability to hit the golf ball well. It's because they're doing their weight shift properly and it allows them to get enough hip depth. Can't say it enough. So here we watch Mr. Thompson's downswing, and he's very similar to Mr. Hogan. Now, I believe that the right hip gets lower than the left hip with these great classic swingers. Here I would absolutely say coming into the ball, that right knee is bent, the right hip is lower than the left. There's a lot of talk today from some people talking about the hips need to stay level and there's lateral side bend. I'm not a huge believer in that now. I feel like the shoulders are tilted and the hips are tilted, and there's not nearly as much lateral side bend as is believed. I believe that the reason why people think there's more lateral side bend in a golf swing than there actually is, is because of a camera distortion problem when you look at a swing down the line. Okay, and I can probably explain that a little bit better, but let's look at one more golf swing. Wow, what a beautiful golf swing. Now let's take a look at this swing from a classic point of view. He gets that right hip very, very deep. The left heel comes up very slightly. But this is the key, when that left heel replants, that initiates your weight shift for you. And if you keep your head behind the ball, then your lower body can work out from underneath you. Now this is very, very key. The reason why people believe there's so much lateral side bend when there isn't is because of the angle of the camera in the down the line view. But from this angle, we're gonna see his hips are tilted. You're not, I'm not going to believe it if you tell me that, no, his hips are level. Look at this. His right hip is much lower than his left hip. I, I don't, I don't understand why people can't see that. So I believe that by running the right knee at the ball, that gets us in a position where these hips and these shoulders are not quite as pinched as I used to believe and many people on the internet talk about now. I believe the lower body needs to work out from underneath us and what this does, we see it right here. That right hip is lower, 
The right heel is still on the ground. When that right heel pops up, of course, that's going to put more length into this leg and level out those hips. But I believe that these guys back in the day were much more accurate than the golfers that we see today. Power was important, but accuracy was absolutely paramount. So let's watch him as he goes through the ball. Yes, Peter Thompson had a very fine golf swing. Wow, this just looks just so amazing. The poison balance is everything. And that's the direction that my swing evolution will be going towards in the future. Yep, that right hip is lower. So I hope this helps you guys. Enjoy the open, hit them long, and hit them straight. It's hard to describe the sound when Mr. Hogan hit a shot. He had this, this tenacity about him. It's really the stuff legends are made of. He was like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. You know, he was an artist with a, with a golf club. This is Ben Hogan's locker right here, number 50. He caddied for my dad. That was the beginning of their relationship. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. He knew what was going to happen, and there wasn't anything he could do about it. Why he actually decided at that point in time to share what he told me, I, I have no idea. What I think he did was he applied physics better than everybody else. Ben Hogan never watched Jack Nicklaus practice, but Jack Nicklaus watched Ben Hogan practice. People say Hogan won't ever talk to you. Well, Hogan talked to me a lot.